Hello friend this is Dr Pankaj Kumar your mentor for today's session and in today's session we will be talking about endosperm which is a knitted tissue and we will be also talking about the different types of endosperm right so we know very well that endosperm develops from primary endosperm nucleus after the very phenomena of the triple fuses in which we have already discussed that uh, the polar nuclei is going to fuse with the one of the male gamete primary primary endosperm cells which eventually develop into the endosperm okay so it's very clear that in angiosperm endosperm is a post fertilized structure generally it is a triploid structure but mind it the ploidy can differ for instance take an example of a uh, tetrasporic 16 nucleate embryo sac so naturally the ploidy will be different not is going to be triploid so depending upon the what is the total number of nuclei that is in the polar region or polar nuclei that that actually made up depending upon that the entire the ploidy of the endosperm is going to be decided but another very important thing is that if you talk about in gymnosperm in the case of gymnosperm what happens that endosperm is formed prior to fertilization so it is a haploid tissue so please remember these things that uh, in gymnosperm endosperm is a haploid and uh, in angiosperm normally and in angiosperm normally it is a a triploid structure right now let's talk about the types of endosperms so depending upon mode of cell division the three types has been recognized what we call nuclear type cellular type and halobial type let's look each one of them so what is nuclear type so in case of nuclear type what happens it divides by free nuclear division and these divisions are not followed by the cell wall formation the cell wall do form but the formation is going to happen when the entire division has already been completed so at the end stage what happens the cell wall is formed initial state is not formed that's why we call them a, a free nuclear division okay and this is the most common type right so that is found in maize sugarcane you can see in the diagram as well you see so it is dividing by the free nuclear division you can see large number of nuclei and finally the cell wall is actually being formed okay the second is what we call cellular type so in case of cellular type what happens that each division is accompanied by a cell wall formation have a look at this so here first division cell wall all subsequent division you can see the very formation of the cell wall the final structure remains the same as we have seen in case of uh, the nuclear type okay but the mode of formation is different here the each division is actually being followed by the cell wall formation okay that is found in magnolia burleria right so these are the some of the examples now there is a one more what we call halobial type now that is that is found in the order halobials of the poisi family okay now here what happens that is a combination of cellular and the nuclear type so the first division is a cellular type that means it is going to divide into two cell and within the two cell there is going to have a free nuclear division have a look at this diagram you see this is the first two division is the cellular one right and then in both these cells there is a free nuclear division but again here the final division remains the same or final structure remains the same so once again it is very clear that these types has been differentiated only on the mode of the formation the ultimate structure remains absolutely the same okay let's talk about some other types of endosperm for instance ruminant endosperm in case of ruminant endosperm what happens that their upper area or surface is uneven and why it is due why it is why it happens it happens due to activity of the seed coat you see the structure over here okay so this is the endosperm the seed coat is going to have some sort of uh, intervention like this so th this is making them the uneven okay so due to activity of the seed coat ruminant endosperm is formed and that is readily found in the family like rubiaceae palmaceae anonaceae so these are the families in which we find the ruminant endosperms okay now let's talk about one more what we call mosaic endosperm so here what happens the endosperms bear different colors you might have seen that in case of mage some of the seed is going to bear or some different color dark yellow or light yellow stuff like that this is what we call mosaic endosperm and that happens due to different color of the endosperms and there is a, some genetical reason and if you talk about the genetics that happens due to jumping gene or transposomes okay so this is what we call mosaic endosperm there is a one more what we call syncytium endosperm 
What is the meaning of syncytium? The meaning is multinucleus or multinuclei. And the typical example is uh, that is a coconut or coconut water. You, you see, coconut water is a endosperm or what, what we can say it is a liquid endosperm. So, large number of free nuclei is actually present over there and they, they act as an endosperm or nutritive tissue. Okay, this is what we call syncytium endosperm, right? Now, let's learn some term. For instance, what is xenia? You know, whenever we observe some genetical effect of pollen grains on endosperm, we call them xenia. I repeat, genetical effect of pollen grains on the endosperm, then we what we call xenia. But there is another term what we call metaxenia. Now, what is metaxenia? When the effect of pollen grain on structure outside the embryo sac is observed, okay, uh, uh, maybe on the ovary. Now, what is metaxenia? When the effect of pollen grains on outside the structure of embryo sac is observed, maybe in the ovary, okay, then we call it as a metaxenia, right? So, xenia, that is effect on the endosperm. But metaxenia effect on the tissues outside the embryo sac. Okay. And as far as the metaxenia is concerned, that is mostly observed in case of date palm. Right. Now, let's learn some very uh, few interesting things about the endosperm. For instance, the highest level of ploidy occurs in endosperm of Aram malcatum. That is whooping 24,576 N. Right. That is the ploidy level that is found in Aram malcatum. There are few species in which endosperm is not found. For instance, take an example of Orchidiaceae, Podostomaceae, Trapeci, in which endosperm is actually not found, right? And in Lorenthus and Santalum, you know, these are the parasite, okay? What happened? Endosperm of different embryo unite together to form composite endosperm. So, Lorenthus and Santalum is an example of composite endosperm, right? So that's all as far as the entire endosperm is concerned. I hope the very concept of endosperm is pretty clear. I would like to conclude with one simple statement that endosperm is nothing but it is a nutritive tissue and that is a result of the triple fusion. Don't forget to like and subscribe this channel. Okay, thank you.